This is the best day you can have, finding a hoard like this. There's muscle cars, there's vintage cars, there's race cars. It's just, just cool stuff. I'm Tom Cotter. The first car I found, I was 12 years old. I'm 61 years old now and I'm still finding cars. And in this series, you'll see that there are still plenty of cars left. There's a rumble coming out of the back, so we'll see what happens. Sometimes the best thing to do is just let it go until it either fixes itself or breaks. That's what's broken? Well, oh, just a bolt back down. Just need for a bolt. I heard about a place called Bubba Dies or Days, D A I S S, from somebody earlier this morning. They said, you know, these are the old car guys in town. And so now we're going to go to Bubba's towing yard. Hopefully they have cool stuff we can look at and maybe can recommend other places for us to go. Okie dokie. Let's go take a look at some rust. Is that, is that a real SS? Yes. Oh, wow. It's a 68 numbers matching car. 68 numbers matching. Is that a big block or small block? Uh, small block. Uh huh. And is that Bubba's? Yes. But, uh, yeah. That's got big old wheels in the back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'd say a thousand bucks less, some, somewhere around there. You take a credit card? <laughs> <laughs> is that a big block Chevelle? Yes. Big block Chevelle convertible, big cowl block induction. Chevelle convertible. So is it, is it like a 72? 72. So it'd be a 502? It's a, that one is actually a, that's a 454 car. Okay. Um, the Chevelles came with a 396 big block option, which is actually like they, from 69 to 72 was a, technically a 402, 402 cubic inches. Uh, okay. 396, they called it a 396 because the name had been like that for so long. Ah, uh, okay. This is a 1958 Morris Minor. You know, most car enthusiasts would walk right by this car. It's no big deal. I've got a, a personal love affair with Morris Miners. Uh, I race one. Finding a Morris Minor in a yard like this, usually they're rust buckets. It's got longitudinally mounted torsion bars in the front. That's your front suspension instead of, instead of springs. And they mount to the a cross member right in the middle of the car. Usually that cross member is so rotted that it's just broken. And at that point, the car needs major surgery or a new frame. So usually I'd walk by a car like this thinking, oh, it's a rust bucket, which I did the first time. But then I came back and it had right-hand drive. So, well, that's interesting, but the problem is most right-hand drive Morris Miners come from England and they come here as rust buckets. But this car, the AU means Australia and the VIC means Victoria. This car is an Australian car, and over here there's a, a New Zealand logo. So this car actually sat in very, very dry climate its whole life. So I crawled underneath this car. The torsion bars are good, the floors are solid, the body's good, and uh, all the glass is good. It's got four hubcaps on it. Uh, what's unusual in this car, it's got semaphores, which are these little blinkers that come out. So it doesn't have blinkers uh, coming out of the lights. It's got these little fingers that stick out and light up at the end kind of comical, but that's what they had in England and in Australia. If somebody wanted to fool around with a cheap car, these cars are bulletproof, they're fun to drive, they're easy to get parts for because any part from a, an MG Midget will go on here, uh, parts from Austin Healey Sprites will work on here. Would I own this car? Yeah, I would. Uh, will I? Probably not because I'd, I'd need to find a divorce uh, attorney. And if Bubba would sell this at a good price, somebody watching this should buy it.
Last on the road in 1959. It looks like it's made of brass. So this is a little French car you, you never see in the States. So I wonder, what, this is like what, a 64 maybe? I have no idea. Yeah. So a little four cylinder, single, single barrel carburetor. Look at all the room. I mean, look at that room. Oh, look at this. It's the original Shell oil specifications for the car when it was new. Look at that. Shell Retinax, Shell Spray and shell spy rack. So, so this is a GMC that you want to give on to your son. Right. It's got a big block in here now. Big block 454 that uh, was not running when I got it. It was just trading some parts I had. Got it home, a couple hours, had it running. It's definitely built. I've always wanted a GMC front end one. It's, it's you know, for every yeah. 500 Chevys they built, they yeah. built maybe 100 GMCs. So. Yep. This is the best day you can have, finding a Ford like this. There's muscle cars, there's vintage cars, there's race cars. It's just, just cool stuff. So we're going to walk around through there. I'll show you up close and personal. Cadillac is one of the most iconic automotive designs in history. It's, it's probably the largest American car ever built. It's uh, a 59 Cadillac, and the body was actually designed by Pininfarina in Italy. So, I mean, it's ironic that Pininfarina designed small Italian cars, and they designed this boat. Lots of Camaros here. Um, El Camino, a 70 Challenger, plum crazy, 318 car. No engine in there right now, it's got a transmission. Uh, 69 Charger, unusual car. I mean, I can't remember the last time I saw one. It's an American Motors Rebel. It's got a 327 American Motors engine, not a, not a GM motor. Automatic, two-door coupe, hardtop. Neat car, I mean, that would be a neat car. If you fixed up a car like that and brought it to Cars and Coffee, you'd be the only guy with a car like that at a Cars and Coffee. Charger. There's two of them there. This this one had a 383 from the factory. It now has a 413. If you think about that Beach Boys song, 413 is really digging in. That's the motor this has, which is a, a big Chrysler motor. It's got an automatic on a column, and there's another 69 Charger in the corner that has an automatic on the floor. These are all hot rods, by the way. If you look, I mean, the wheels are all like drag wheels. You know, they're, they're either chrome or slotted or alloy wheels. So every, almost everything back here is a hot rod. This is a, a kind of an emergency vehicle that was on an air base. So if somebody got hurt, there's stretchers in the back and, and it was down in Florida. By the way, he drove it back here. So it, probably with, without a lot of work, this car could be a running driving car again. So we, we look behind this fence and the man let us come back here. You like Fords? He's got Fords. You like Camaros? He's got those too. He's really a Mopar guy. He's got Chargers. He's got a Challenger. 
He's got a Cadillac. He's got Mustangs. He's got a Fairlane convertible. He's got a 56 Chevy sedan delivery. This is like a hodgepodge of car collecting, and this is wonderful. This, this yard offers something to everybody who's into old cars. Finding old cars, you gotta be a salesman. You gotta talk to old mechanics, find out where the old restorers live, uh, go to auto parts stores, go to repair shops. Uh, it's not always easy to find old cars, but if you look over a fence once in a while, you ask the right questions, sometimes you come across a bunch of neat cars like we found in Savannah. We found cars in the town of Savannah, and now we're west of Savannah. So if you think you can't find cars in a metropolitan area like Savannah, I've got news for you, you can. Happy hunting.